method itself says it is half reaction method or ion electron method right so what we are going to do in the next step is we are going to split it into two different reactions that means one will be the oxidation half reaction and the other one will be reduction half reaction right so now to balance the number of electrons in oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction you have to multiply the oxidation half reaction by 6 so i'm going to add 4h2o here again to balance is 4h2o the exact number of oh minus i'm going to add on this side so this is the way in which we have to balance this Hello everyone, this is Ampli Unikrishan from the Department of Chemistry. So today we are back with session 4, that's the last session of the chapter Redox Reactions. So in the last session, we discussed about balancing of oxidation reduction reactions, right? So in detail, we discussed about the oxidation number method. So in today's session, we are going to study about half reaction method or ion electron method, right? And also the applications of redox reactions, okay? So in the last session, we only discussed about the balancing of redox reactions in acidic medium. So in today's session, we will be discussing in the basic medium also, that is the oxidation number method as well as the ion electron method, okay? So let's see, the method for balancing redox reactions by ion electron method was developed by Jette and Lamov in 1927. So the next method we are going to study. So the steps that we have to follow to balance the redox reactions are quite similar with what we have studied in oxidation number method itself. Okay. So let's see. For the given skeleton equation, assign oxidation numbers to the atoms in the equation and find out which atoms are undergoing oxidation and reduction. So that is the same step that we have done in the other method also. First we have to write the skeletal equation, right? And then we have to assign the oxidation numbers based on the rule which we have already studied, right? So once we assign the oxidation number, we have to identify which atom is undergoing oxidation and a reduction, right? And the next step is split the redox reaction into two half reactions. So the method itself says it is half reaction method or ion electron method, right? So what we are going to do in the next step is we are going to split it into two different reactions. That means one will be the oxidation half reaction and the other one will be reduction half reaction, right? Okay. Then balance the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen for each half reaction using simple multiples. Okay. So the next step is also quite similar. We have to balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen atoms by using the suitable multiples, right? Suitable integers we have to use to multiply so that the number of atoms will be equal on both the oxidation half reaction as well as the reduction half reaction. Now, remove the electrons from the oxidation half reaction and add the electrons to the reduction half reaction. As the name suggests, it is ion electron method, right? So, in oxidation reaction, what is happening? There will be loss of electrons and in reduction, there will be gain of electrons. So, we have to add and subtract those number of electrons in that reaction. Okay, so now multiply the oxidation equation by added electrons of reduction half reaction and the reduction equation by removed electrons of oxidation half reaction so that the number of electrons become equal in both the half reactions. So the next step is to make the number of electrons same on the oxidation half reaction as well as the reduction half reaction, right? So the number of electrons which is associated in the oxidation and reduction, we have to use the suitable multiples or suitable integers so that the number of electrons will also become the same, right? Now the next one is balance hydrogen and oxygen atoms by water molecules. This also we have done in the oxidation number method, adding the suitable number of molecules of water, right? Yes, now there comes two criteria that is whether it is in acidic medium or basic medium. So in acidic medium we have already studied on whichever side there is the deficiency of oxygen atom we need to add the suitable number of molecules of water and on the other side the appropriate number of H plus ion molecules are supposed to be added right. So let's see first in the acidic medium first balance oxygen atoms by adding water molecules to whatever side deficient in oxygen atoms and then balance hydrogen atoms by adding H plus ions to whichever side which is deficient in hydrogen atoms. So we this we have already done in the last session right and for basic medium what we have to do again the first step is, is the same when in whichever side oxygen atoms is less 
we have to add water molecules there and then how many hydrogen atoms is required that much number of molecules of water is again to be added on the other side so instead of h plus ions adding h plus ions we are going to add water molecules itself right and to balance that the exact number of oh minus ions is also added on the other side so this might be a little confusing when you read this but once we do do the problems it will be clear for you so let's see first balance oxygen atoms by adding water molecules is the same whichever deficient in oxygen atoms the hydrogen atoms are then balanced by adding water molecules okay we are adding water itself not h plus ions equal in number to the deficiency of hydrogen atoms and an equal number of OH minus ions are added to the opposite side of the reaction. So, this is the steps. Now, let us take a problem. Balance the following redox reaction by half reaction method. So, we are going to follow the half reaction method. So, the reaction is already given to you. So, the first step is to write the skeletal equation. So, it is already skeletal equation itself which is given. Now, we have to assign the oxidation numbers in the next step. So, Fe2 plus plus Cr2 O7 2 minus gives Fe3 plus and Cr3 plus. So, here Fe2 plus Fe3 plus and Cr3 plus are ions. So, the oxidation number is the charge itself, right? So, it is plus 2 here, plus 3 here and plus 3 here. For Cr2 O7 2 minus, we can calculate Cr2 O7 2 minus. So, it is 2x plus 7 into minus 2. For oxygen, it is minus 2, right? Which will be equal to minus 2, which is the charge, right? So, 2x minus 14 will be equal to minus 2, 2x will be equal to 12, x will be equal to plus 6, right? So, that is the oxidation number here. So, assigning of oxidation number is done. Now, the next step is to identify which is undergoing oxidation and reduction. So, iron from plus 2 state, it has increased to plus 3 state. The oxidation number has increased from plus 2 to plus 3. So, oxidation number increasing means it is oxidation, right? Now, for chromium, from plus 6, it has reduced to plus 3. So, it is undergoing reduction. So, the step 2 is also done, right? Now, the next step, separate the equation into two half reactions. So, now, we are going to split the uh, reaction into two half reactions. One is oxidation half reaction, the other one is reduction half reaction. So, Fe2 plus getting oxidized to Fe3 plus, that is the oxidation half reaction, right? So, that is what is shown here. And the reduction half reaction cr 2 minus 2 cr 3 plus right now the next step is balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen in each half reaction individually so other than oxygen and hydrogen atoms we are going to balance okay so fe2 plus 2 fe3 plus it is getting oxidized so the number of atoms of iron is same on both sides so there is nothing to balance here but in the next case that is reduction half cell cr 2 7 2 minus 2 CR3 plus it is, right? CR2O7 2 minus 2, CR3 plus. So, now in this case, as you can see on the reactant sides, there are two atoms of chromium and on the product side, only one. So, what do we have to do? We have to multiply it by 2, right? So, that is what is shown here, 2 CR3 plus, okay? So, now balancing of other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen is done, right? Only one atom of iron here, one atom of iron here, two atoms of chromium here, two atoms of chromium here. So, so now moving on to the next step. For reactions occurring in acidic medium, add water molecules to balance oxygen atoms and add H plus to balance hydrogen atoms. Okay. So it's given that it is in acidic medium. So we have to add the appropriate number of molecules of water and to balance that on the other side, we have to add the appropriate number of H plus ions as well. So let's see, it is given Fe2 plus 2, Fe3 plus, right on the reactant side you have Fe2 plus and Cr2O7 2 minus. We are going to combine both of the equations. So Fe2 plus and Cr2O7 2 minus gives Fe3 plus and Cr3 plus, this is what the 2 Cr3 plus, this is what the equation is. So now we have to calculate the number of oxygens on either sides, right? So you have 7 atoms of oxygen here and you have no oxygen here as of now, right? So to balance the number of oxygen atoms, we have to add the required number of molecules of water on the side which is deficient in oxygen atom. So you can see there is no oxygen atoms here. So we add 7 molecules of water, right? So that you will get 7 oxygen. Now we have to balance the number of hydrogen atoms, right? So how many hydrogen atoms? 7 into 2 will be there, 14, right? So that many H plus ions to be added on the other side. So that is done, right? Now add electrons in respective side of the half reactions to balance the charges. 
Thus, oxidation and reduction half reactions are written to balance the charges as. So, let's see. Now, we have to write the number of electrons also associated with this because it is ion electron method, right? So, when Fe2 plus is getting oxidized to Fe3 plus, that is from plus 2 oxidation number to plus 3 oxidation number, how many electrons are being released? Right, one electron is being lost, that is oxidation has taken place. Now, Cr2 O7 2 minus to 2 Cr3 plus, that is here the oxidation number is plus 6, here the oxidation number is plus 3, that means oxidation number is uh, increased by 3 or else there are 3 electrons which is associated. But that is for one atom of chromium. But you have two atoms of chromium here. So that is six electrons which is being accepted. So that you get 2Cr3+. plus. So it will be 3 into 2. Right. It is plus 6 to plus 3. That means three electrons is being accepted. But still there are. That is for one atom of chromium. But you have two here. So that is 3 into 2. Okay. So that is six electron. So 14 H plus and 7 H2 it is already we have balanced right. Now to equalize the number of electrons in both half reactions multiply the oxidation half reaction by six. Okay. So here you can see only one electron right and here you can see there are six electrons. So now to balance the number of electrons in oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction you have to multiply the oxidation half reaction by 6, right. So, that the number of electrons will be same, 6 electrons here and 6 electrons here, right. So, you will get 6 Fe2 plus gives 6 Fe3 plus and 6 electron. So, now what happened? The number of electrons is also same, right. Now, add the two half reactions to get the overall reaction and cancel the electrons on each side. That means, if we are going to add these two reactions, that is this one and this one, if you are going to add, you can see 6 electrons on the product side here and 6 electrons on the reactant side here. So, if you are adding these two reactions, this two will get cancelled. Now, whatever is left, you can combine it and write that will be your final balanced redox chemical equation. So, 6 Fe2 plus, right, you have the 6 Fe2 plus here, Cr2 O7 2 minus and 14 H plus ions gives 6 Fe3 plus, right, again it is 6 Fe3 plus and 2 Cr3 plus and 7 H2O. So, this is the balanced redox reaction. So, I hope it is clear in acidic medium how you are supposed to do this. Now, let us take an example in basic medium how we are going to do the redox reaction by half reaction method. So, permanganate ion MnO4 minus in basic solution oxidizes iodide ion to produce molecular iodine and manganese oxide. Write a balanced ionic equation to represent this redox reaction. So, we have to write the appropriate equation and then we are going to balance it. So, first we write the skeletal equation that is MnO4 minus plus I minus gives MnO2 and I2 and it is given that it is in basic medium. So, uh, the first few steps will be the same then we have a small change in the procedure that we are going to or the steps that we have to follow. Okay. So, this is the skeletal equation which is written down here. Now, we have to identify the oxidation and reduction which atoms are undergoing oxidation and reduction. So, for that MnO4 minus let us calculate the oxidation number. So, it is x plus 4 into minus 2 is equal to minus 1 x minus 8 is equal to minus 1, x is equal to plus 7. So, here manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state, iodine it is minus 1, right? And MnO2, let us calculate for MnO2 also, it is x plus 2 into minus 2 is equal to 0. So, x minus 4 is equal to 0, x will be equal to plus 4. So, manganese here it is plus 4 and iodine will be 0 as it is in its elementary state. So, what happens from manganese plus, one, plus 7 to plus 4 it has reduced. So, it is undergoing reduction and iodine minus 1 it has increased to 0. So, that means it has undergone oxidation. So, we identified the oxidation and reduction half reaction, right? So, the oxidation half reaction is I minus getting converted into I2 that is minus 1 to 0 oxidation number has increased. Now, the reduction of reaction is MnO4 minus 2 MnO2 that is from plus 7 it has reduced to plus 4. Okay. So, till here I hope it is clear. Now, to balance the iodine atoms in the oxidation of reaction, what do we have to do? Now, the next step is to balance the other atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So, in this case you can see one atom of iodine and two atoms of iodine here. So, what do we have to do? We have to multiply this by 2, right. So, that means 2i minus will give i2. So, we multiply it by the 2. 
so i hope that is clear so here you have only one atom of manganese and one atom of manganese okay so there is no need to multiply with anything in the reduction half reaction so the iodine is balanced here and the manganese is also balanced here right now the next step is to balance the oxygen atom in the reduction half reaction add two water molecules on the right okay so you have mno4 minus which is giving mno2 so here you have four atoms of oxygen you have two atoms of oxygen so to balance this you need to add two atoms of oxygen here right so that means you have to add two molecules of water so you add two molecules molecules of water here so that is the first step now if it was an acidic medium what you are supposed to do you are supposed to add that is 2 into 2 4 h plus ions here but this is in basic medium so there is a slight change so let's see as a reaction takes place in basic solution therefore add 4 h2o molecules to the equation so that means that you have mno4 minus which is giving mno2 and 2 h2o now the number of atoms of oxygen is balanced but number of hydrogen atoms also needs to be balanced so how many hydrogen atoms are here 2 into 2 4 atoms of hydrogen so to balance that in acidic medium we add 4 h plus ions but in basic medium that number of hydrogen atoms we are going to add in form of water molecules itself that means 2 into 2 4 molecules of water we are going to add on the other side so that is what is shown here mno4 minus plus 4 h2o we added 2 h2o here in the beginning right so 2 into 2 4 h2o we are going to add here again the number of hydrogen and oxygen will be not balanced so the exact number how many molecules of water we are going to add the exact number of oh minus we are supposed to add on this side okay on the other side so this is the step in basic medium now we can see 2h2o here on the product side and 4h2o here so this will cancel out and you can get 2h2o here on the reactant side 4h2o and 2h2o that will be 2h2o so this is the last equation mno4 minus plus 2h2o gives mno2 and 4oh minus so i hope till here it is clear now moving on to the last step in this step balance the charges of the two half reaction in the manner depicted as so you can see now it is ion electron method right in terms of electron we have to write so it was 2 i minus which is giving i2 so that means 2 i minus it's getting oxidized to i2 means how many electrons are being lost right two electrons and in mno4 plus 2 h2o that is it is getting converted into mno2 mno4 is getting mno4 minus getting reduced to mno2 how many electrons are associated with this from plus 7 to plus 4 oxidation number right oxidation state we have written that in the beginning itself that means three electrons are associated here right and it gives 4 oh minus ion which is already written here okay so you can see here two electrons here and three electrons here now again what is the next step we have to balance the number of electrons as well so that means we have to multiply this particular equation by 3 right and we are going to multiply this particular equation by 2 so it is 3 into 2 you will get 6 and here also 2 into 3 you will get 6 so that means the number of electrons we can make it equal so that is what we are going to do now to equalize the number of electrons multiply the oxidation of reaction by 3 and the reduction of reaction by I hope it is clear so it becomes 6 i minus gives 3 i2 plus 6 electron and 2 mno4 minus plus 4 h2o plus 6 electrons gives mno2 and 8 oh minus so it's this what i have explained this reaction if you multiply by 3 you're going to get this one and this reaction if you're going to multiply by 2 that means each term you're going to or each of the reactants and products you're going to multiply by this number so you're going to get this so i hope it is clear now we are going to add two half reactions to obtain the net reaction after cancelling the electrons on both sides so you can see the six electrons are on the product side here and six electrons are on the reactant side here so these two will get cancelled now we are going to add both of the reactions so you get 6 i minus plus 2 mno4 minus and what is left here on the reactant side 4 h2o which gives 3 i2 2 mno2 which is on the product side and 8 OH minus. So that's it. So this is the final equation. So if you count the number of atoms on both of the sides, the oxygen, hydrogen atoms and all other atoms will be balanced. So this is the final balanced redox 
equation in case of basic medium. So, I hope it is clear. Now, let us do one more last problem based on this. Balance the following equation by electron ion electron method in basic medium. So, the equation is already given to you. So, the first step assign the oxidation number, identify which is undergoing oxidation and reduction. MnO4 minus plus Br minus gives MnO2 and BrO3 minus. So, this is the equation. So, if you calculate the oxidation number, it will be plus 7 here. Br minus it will be minus 1. MnO2 it is plus 4. We have already discussed this in the previous example, right? And BrO3 minus, if you have to calculate it, BrO3 minus x plus 3 into minus 2 is equal to minus 1. x minus 6 is equal to minus 1. x is equal to plus 5, right? So, that is what is shown here. So, the oxidation number we have calculated. So, that means manganese from plus 7, it has reduced to plus 4. So, that means reduction half reaction is that one. And bromine from minus 1, it has increased to plus 5. So, that is undergoing oxidation. So, that is what is represented here. So, that part is also clear. Now, the next step is to write it into two half reactions. Oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction, right? So, MnO4 minus getting reduced to MnO2. That is the reduction half reaction. That is plus 7 to plus 4, right? And Br minus is getting oxidized into BrO3 minus, which is the oxidation half reaction. That is minus 1 to plus 5. So, this much is done. Now, the next step is MnO4, the two reactions we have written separately. MnO4 minus getting converted into MnO2 and Br minus is oxidized to BrO3 minus. So, now the electrons associated with the oxidation and reduction we are going to represent it. So, MnO4 minus it is getting converted into MnO2 that is it is reduced to MnO2 that means plus 7 to plus 4 means how many electrons are being accepted here? Yes, there is a gain of 3 electrons which is represented. Now, Br minus that is minus 1 to plus 5 means how many electrons? That is 6 electrons. So, 3 electrons in the uh, reduction half reaction and 6 electrons in the oxidation half reaction. Right. So, now that part is done. The next step is to balance the number of atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. So, here manganese is 1 and manganese is 1. The number of atoms is same. Here also one atom of bromine, one atom of bromine. So, there is no problem in that case. Now, we have to balance the number of oxygen atoms. So, let us write down the reduction of reaction first that is MnO4 minus plus 3 electron gives MnO2. Right. So, this is the reduction half reaction. So, you have four atoms of oxygen here and two atoms of oxygen here. So, to balance that we are going to add two molecules of water here. So, if I add two molecules of water here in basic medium, the required amount or required number of hydrogen atoms we are going to add in form of water molecule itself. So, 2 into 2 it is 4. So, I am going to add 4 H2O here. Again to balance this 4 H2O, the exact number of OH minus I am going to add on this side. So, this is the way in which we have to balance this. So, now what happens is this 2 H2O and 4 H2O gets cancelled and you will get 2 H2O here. So, that is what is you can see in this reaction. MnO4 minus plus 3 electron plus 2 H2O gives MnO2 and 4 OH minus. So, this is in the case of reduction half reaction. Now, oxidation half reaction if you are considering it is Br minus gives BrO3 minus plus 6 electron. Now, in this case, you do not have any oxygen atom here, but you have 3 oxygen atom here. So, that means how many molecules of water you have to add on this side? 3 molecules of water. So, 3 molecules of water means how many water molecules on the other side now? That is 3 into 2, 6 you have to add, 6 H2O. Now, the exact number of OH minus we have to add on this side as well. So, this 3 H2O and 6 H2O you will get 3 H2O here. So, that is what is shown here Br minus plus 6 OH minus gives BrO3 minus 6 electron and 3 H2O. So, till here I hope it is clear, right? So, once we write the we balance the other atoms, we have to balance the number of oxygen and hydrogen atom. As it is in the basic medium, we are doing it in this form. If it was acidic me medium, you just have to add the appropriate number of H plus ions. But in basic medium, you have to add it in the form of water molecules itself. And the exact number of uh, water molecules that you have added, that exact number of OH minus you have to add on the other side. Okay, so this is the reaction you are getting. Now, what we have to do, you can see here three electrons and two electrons in this case. So, now we have to, the next step is to balance the number of electrons. So, in the 
um, reduction half reaction you can see 3 electrons and the oxidation half reaction you can see 6 electrons. So, how can you balance this, this particular equation that is the reduction half reaction if you multiply by 2 the number of electrons will be same right. So, that is MnO4 minus plus 3 electron plus 2 H2 gives MnO2 plus 4 OH minus this particular reaction we are multiplying by 2 and this uh, equation we keep it as it is. So, what happens the number of electrons 3 into 2 will be 6 here. So, this 6 electron 3 into 2 the whole reaction we are multiplying by 2 right. So, this 6 electron and this is 6 electron will get cancelled. So, now the rest of it we are going to join together or add together and write. So, into 2 means 2 MnO4 which is shown here 2 MnO4 minus plus Br minus plus H2O. So, where did this H2O come from? 2 into 2 will give you 4 H2O right. 2 into 2 will give you 4 H2O and on the product side you have 3 H2O. So, this 4 H2O and 3 H2O will cancel and you will get just one molecule of water. So, I hope it is clear. Now, coming to the product side again 2 into MnO2 will give you 2 MnO2. Then you have BrO3 minus and you have 2 OH minus which is left here. That is here from here you will get 8 OH minus that is 4 into 2 8 and here you have 6 OH minus. So, 8 OH minus and 6 OH minus will cancel and you will get 2 OH minus. So, I hope it is clear. So, this is how you have to balance the redox reaction in basic medium. So, I hope the steps is also clear for you. So, now moving on to the last part that is applications of redox reactions. Okay. So, the first one is redox reactions as the basis for titrations. So, in your second year you will be doing titrations which is based on the redox reactions. In redox system titration method can be adopted to determine the strength of the reducing agent and oxidizing agent using redox indicators. The use of indicators during redox reactions can be illustrated as follows. There is self indicator method as well as internal indicator method. Now the next one is electrode process in redox reactions. When a metal rod is dipped in a solution containing its own ions, equilibrium is established between metal and the metal ions of the solution. Due to this equilibrium, a potential is developed by the metal with respect to the solution. This potential is called single electrode potential or potential of the half cell. So, this also in detail you are going to study in your second year in the chapter electrochemistry. So, that means that for example, if you are taking zinc sulfate solution here, zinc sulfate solution and we are going to dip a rod of zinc which is made of the same metal right zinc we are going to dip in zinc sulfate what happens is redox reaction will take place oxidation and reduction will take place and what happens is there will be a potential which will be developed between the electrolyte and the electrode okay so here also the application is based on what it is based on redox reaction right so what does this mean for example let's take one half cell that is zinc sulfate electrolyte we have taken and zinc rod is dipped here and on the other half cell you have copper sulfate electrolyte which is on which or into which copper rod is dipped and now we can connect it through a wire and attach a voltmeter. So, now what does this mean is in detail you are going to study in the second year in electrochemistry chapter. So, what happens here is in zinc electrode oxidation reaction will take place and in copper reduction reaction will take place that is this is where where oxidation is taking place that will be your anode and where reduction is taking place that will be your cathode. So, in anode what happens is zinc gets oxidized to Zn2 plus by releasing two electrons and in the cathode copper 2 plus ions will accept these two electrons and forms copper. So, this is what is happening oxidation and reduction will take place that is why simultaneously it is taking place. So, it is a redox reaction right. So, because of this oxidation and reduction taking place there will be a potential which is developed. So, as you can see in the anode the electrode where oxidation occurs. In anode what happens? Oxidation occurs and anions are attached to it connected to the positive end of battery in an electrolytic cell okay and loses weight in electrolytic cell. Why it loses the weight means as this reaction is proceeding what happens is the size of this electron keeps reducing because it is getting oxidized right it is losing its electrons it is getting oxidized then what happens is the size of copper which is acting as the cathode it is accepting these electrons and copper is getting deposited on the copper rod. So, what happens the size of this electrode will increase. Now, in cathode electrode where reduction occurs right and cations are attracted to it 
connected to the negative end of the battery in an electrolytic cell and it gains weight in electrolytic cell. That means its size increases. So, these are the applications of redox reaction. So, that is titration and in the electrolytic cell. So, by this we come to an end to this chapter. So, I hope the concepts that we have covered in this whole chapter is clear for you. So, let's meet in the next session with a new chapter. So, that's all for today. Thank you.